just told Senator Stabenow that she brought the sun, the beautiful day. She thinks I did it, but I'm pretty sure she did it. Everywhere she goes, it's a beautiful day. Uh, we're going to remind you of that in the winter. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and, and welcome. I am, I am thrilled that this day is finally here. Um, many of you know the story, but, but when I found out, uh, when we all found out that Senator Stabenow was, was retiring, you know, first it's like, oh my God, um, she's always been there. She's always been there for us, no matter, you know, where, which level of government. Um, but uh, it, it dawned on me. I had this, this moment where it was like, you know, I, I think, to be honest with you, I was, in, I was in Illinois and I was driving and there was a something or other for one of their U.S. senators and I was in Detroit area and John Dingle had something and, and you know, we, we, love, we love Debbie Stabenow and we own, we, we, we take ownership that this is where she started, this is where it all began. She's the first woman from Michigan in the U.S. Senate. She's incredible. She is powerful. She has made sure that people are taken care of in the farm bill and, and so many other things. I haven't even looked at my talking points. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is this is this was obvious. This was easy. Um, this was something that was important. That we in Lansing are the first ones here to honor her. We won't be the last, um, but we are the first ones to honor um, our U.S. senator. When you talk to her and tell and you hear the story, she lived on the South Side. Um, she was a county commissioner. I was just I was just talking to Bob Trezice, and I didn't realize that you and his mom were the first two uh, women county commissioners, which I did not know until about an hour ago. Um, so yes, um, and she has just been incredible for us here in Lansing. She is a national leader. She's broken down barriers. She often says we can't have a strong economy unless we make things and grow things. Um, and she says it everywhere. And we know that she's done so much for, for manufacturing and, and again, to help our, our kids. Um, she is chair of the powerful Senate Committee on Agriculture, Nutrition and Forestry. Um, her work continues to shape policy. I know she's a little frustrated because she wants to bang her colleagues to get yes. things done, yes. um, and that's what we expect. Um, so I am, I am so excited. Um, when we looked at, at what was the what was the best um, park to name after Debbie Stabenow, we saw Washington Park, and we know there's so much going on here. When you walk through, and you see the incredible art, and you see the playground equipment, you see the pavilion, and you see all this the, the great things to do. We wanted a, a sizable park, um, but also. Um, knowing Senator Stabenow, this is, this is what we're dubbing our corridor of care. Um, we're going to have right across the street, Child and Family Charities uh, is going to be operating their, their youth shelter and, and they're going to be doing so much there for, our, for those of need. We're going to have our, our, uh, our police and fire and justice complex right next door. This is going to be a really important corridor. So when you talk about making a difference uh, and you talk about Senator Stabenow and, and her staff helping to bring money to this corridor, this just this was obvious. This was easy. This was the most uh, obvious. And, and we've got two Parks Board members here I want to thank for help shepherding this through. I saw Thurston Walters and Isaac Francisco both on our Parks Board. You helped us shepherd this through. We appreciate it. Um, I also want to recognize our elected officials that are here. I saw Clerk Chris Swope, who I think is behind the camera. There he is, um, who has known Debbie for a very long time. Very long time. Um, I saw Kara Hope, Representative Kara Hope, right over here. Um, we appreciate you being here. And then, of course, um, I always embarrass her, but uh, our, our newest, but um, always everywhere, Councilwoman Tamara Carter. Um, she has been fantastic as a new council member, but it feels like it's been years, even though it's been months. Um, but again, thank you all for coming. Um, it is such an honor. And now uh, I'll stop talking because you're not here for me. Let's hear from the, the woman of the hour, as she always is, U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow. Well, good afternoon, and thank you so much, uh, Mayor Shore, a great friend, and um, uh, very grateful for this. It's, it's very special to me. It's special uh, for my family. My mom is here, my Ann Greer. Mom lives actually just just down the road a ways, and I was thinking about it. Um, so, you know, all the memories come floating back. But my very first home outside of East Lansing, you know, I came from Claire down to go to Michigan State. Go green. Go all right, I know I'm in the right place. <laughs> this is good. Okay, but I came down and basically never left. So, as an adult, this has been my home and my first home outside of East Lansing was on Barnes Avenue right over here. Right. We, we were uh, renting part of a house and then bought a house uh, not too far from here. And then South Lansing has been my home. And 
I was thinking about it. I'm not sure. I don't think my county commission district went south of Mount Hope. It was everything north. But since then, as a state rep and a state senator and a U.S. House and U.S. Senator, I have had the honor and pleasure of representing this community, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. I want to say a special thank you to the artists that I know who did the Michigan Women uh, Walls of Fame. T. Brown, where's T? Thank you for all of your... So beautiful, and everybody involved in the arts. I mean, I, I love open spaces and parks, and of course, a really important uh, part of my work has been protecting our Great Lakes and protecting our land and our open spaces. But another big part for me has been the arts and, and how we kind of bring that all together, and, and also music. Which, and so arts, music, uh, what we do together in terms of celebrating uh, the, the beautiful earth around us, um, it, it's all important. And I really appreciate the fact that the park kind of uh, brings it all together. So I want to thank Brett and the, the, the parks folks and uh, and T. Brown. And um, again, so proud that mom's here. My brother Lee grew up in, in Lansing area. Lee's here, Lee Greer. And, and my wonderful staff, uh, so many of my staff who've been with me forever. Um, are here. Raise your hands, Gloria, Anna, Sally, everybody. Um, thank you, as thank you, thank you as well. You know, I I do have to say also that um, I remember coming to this park for a long, long time with my kids. And I can't wait to have my grandkids come. Uh, we had an ice skating rink, Mayor. We, did. we want. I want the ice skating <laughs> rink. Yeah. Before, yeah, let's let's work on that, right? I want I want. We need to get that done. I'll be I'll be happy to be here to cut the ribbon on that because uh, that that was that was so special um, when the when the kids were little and uh, we had such a good time with that. So I would love to have that back. Let me also say, my both my son and daughter are products of the Lansing Public Schools, and um, very proud of that as well. And also, as I said before, the opportunity to really represent this community and, and serve the community for so long. Everybody asks me where I'm gonna go when I retire. I'm saying I'm staying in Lansing. That's right. So, <laughs> um, and how could you leave the most beautiful state in the country? I mean, I've had a chance to travel all of them. And it is not an exaggeration that this is the most beautiful place. And so I intend to be here. Let me say just one other thing, and that relates to the corridor of care that the mayor talked about. Um, I've been involved, as you know, in health care issues, uh, mental health care issues, my whole time in public service, and working with the hospital in Ingham and then all the changes that have gone on over the years. But I'm really excited about the coming together and the vision of both the uh, Community Mental Health Board as well as the folks involved with child and family charities. Um, I'm pleased to have been able to bring in substantial funding to help create a crisis center that is so important as part of our building community mental health and addiction care that is funded like, in, that is insurance. It's not grants that stop and start. It's health care. And that's the transformation um, that I've been leading um, nationwide, but we're doing it here in Michigan and doing it here in Lansing to provide care for anyone who needs it, who walks in the door, to provide crisis stabilization care so somebody's not going to the, the jail when what they need is to get help. They're not sitting in an emergency room when what they need is help. And so they're going to get that here. And then when you add on top of that, the fact that family and child charities serving young people, serving families for years, I'm proud to have been able to bring in resources to help with what they are doing, the Be The Light campaign, right? <laughs> to raise money, all right, make sure you can fully fund what you are doing is so important, but everything that's done as it relates to supporting families, um, helping children, focusing on abuse and neglect, uh, prevention, helping young people. I mean, all of these things 
really go to what I think are a set of values that this community holds that we should feel very proud of in terms of caring from one, for one another. You know, we're in a time now where people like hold up that we should only care about ourselves. And, and that's not who we are. That's, those are not the values that endure. It's about caring about your neighbor. It's about caring about the person you don't know, but want to make sure that they receive what they need as well. And so I want to thank you again, the, the, the combination of the corridor of care along with uh, the park and all it means for families uh, and, and to be able to have fun together and to enjoy the outdoors and the future ice skating rink. <laughs> uh, we, we know this is about family. Uh, this is about community and I'm uh, really looking forward to having my grandkids come and join in the fun. So thank you so much. We're working on it. We're working on it, I promise. I told her we're working on it. There's actually a lot of folks that wanted to do it. My, my kids learned to, to ice skate actually here as well, with the, the double skating blades. Exactly. That's right, my kids did too. We're, 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 give me a little time on that. Um, because I was really excited, I jumped the gun on some of the program. Um, I do want, uh, Senator Stabenow mentioned T. Brown uh, is here. Do you want to come and talk a little bit about the art? Yes. Oh, now you want me to talk? Yes, yes I do. You're on my list and I skipped you. I, we can do it over by the art if you want. Up. Well, hi everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, again, obviously I'm T. Let me get out my little notes here. So we're a little out of order. But um, <laughs> initially, when I began um, the conjuring up for the concept for this grant, um, I was a little hesitant. What should I do? You know, there's so many possibilities when you're an artist. Um, and then I thought about my grandmother Nancy Hammond um, and what she would do. <laughs> and when I was a young girl, she took me down to uh, the Michigan Women Hall of Fame, which I was like, let me start there, right? No. I went there and I was shocked that the historic building was in shambles. It was completely run down. There was nothing left. It was ruined, rotten, and forgotten. So I began a new adventure trying to find where the Michigan Women Hall of Fame was, right? Um, so a little Google search, it led me to a website called Michigan Women Forward, her story. And it claimed that there was an office downtown. So I proceeded just about a mile down the road from Malcolm X, which is where the Michigan Women Hall of Fame used to be. And I was met with further disappointment. <laughs> it was not there. COVID had pretty much exhausted the funding. There was nothing there. So I was like, now I know what I need to do. Yeah, I need to... Uh, find a new age visual representation to recognize these amazing women and everything that they have done. Um, and so in their dedications to justice and the environment and, and our planet and everything that they have done, it's, it's, it's actually mind blowing. And on my sign, I have where you can find more information about all these women, because this is only, there's only nine of them here. Okay, there is over 300. So for me trying to make a choice out of all the amazing women, that was, that was a feat in itself, but I knew I just knew that Debbie Stabenow had to be in there because she is an amazing person. My grandmother spoke very highly of her. Um, and plus she was retiring and this would be the perfect place because the park is named after her. So I was like, she's absolutely necessary in making the project come to life. Um, and as an artist who always strives to grow and change and bring awareness and consciousness and of course, good vibes, right? Uh, to any place that I stepped foot in, I uh, I knew that I had to I had to re like I had to be here and be a part of this. So um, the revamping of this park from Washington Park to what is now Stabenow Park, I am forever grateful and being a part of that. Um, and I can't introduce the senator because you know she's already been introduced. So thank you everybody so much. I would like to everyone you know go down there and make your way and see the artwork and the rest of the park and. Thank you very, very Thank much. You. <laughs> Before we cut, we have a we have a gift for the senator and her family. So we get to give her this. All right, everyone, let's go. Let's go cut the ribbon. Let's go pull the thing. Yeah, Three, two, one. Yeah. Woo!
So big day for us here, beautiful day really. We've been blessed with some great weather here at the end of 2024. And uh, this is a park that has been a park since the 1940s. I believe 1942, the city of Lansing bought Washington Park from uh, Arioles Motor uh, Company. So it has been around that long. And obviously it's had several transformations, whether that be the ice rink or some of the play structures or the tennis that took place here. But we have a lot of new features in the park with the uh, fitness and the new playground and we're looking forward to what it will bring here in the future now that that is Stabenow Park and just just recognizing you know our state senator and all that she has done not only for the nation and for the state but obviously here in Lansing she is truly Lansing and uh, being able to have that recognition here and some of the art that we put in that kind of ties that all together is really exciting so here's to the future when I was looking for inspiration, I went down to the Michigan, what used to be the Michigan Women Hall of Fame, and it was no longer there. And so that led me to try to find where it had gone, and it was nowhere to be gone. So I knew I had to do something to represent these amazing women and everything that they've done and accomplished, um, not only for women, but for society as a whole and for our planet. Um, and I'm a huge environmentalist. I'm very I'm an advocate pretty much for environmental, like, I'm a tree hugger, yes, that's me. Um, so, and Debbie Stabenow is as well. So she was a huge part. I like, I absolutely knew I had to put her in here. Plus, the park is being renamed after her, so it's kind of easy, you know? It's very special to be here. Since coming to Lansing and, and going to Michigan State, I've lived on the south side of Lansing the whole time. And so to have a South Lansing Park with my name on it uh, really means a lot to me. You know, I brought my kids when they were little. We went ice skating. I'm lobbying to return to having an ice skating rink. Uh, but it also was uh, a place just to have a lot of family picnics and to enjoy the outdoors. I love the fact that the arts have been uh, woven into the park because I'm a, a very big advocate for the arts. And being surrounded by the corridor of care that's gonna help families get the health care and support and mental health services they need uh, just adds to it. So it's a, it's a special place and a very special day and I'm grateful.